2024, and it's time for us to make our dreams happen. And uh, so much of our blocks come from this thing that a lot of people have a harder time talking about than our sexual trauma. You know, I've had a lot of clients who've had immense sexual trauma, but they would rather go into that than talk about money. Isn't that interesting? So I welcome you to this video. Um, I'm going to be going over every dimension of the money wound and poverty curses and spells and implants to get to the root of your disempowerment and blocks from abundance. And if you like my grounded and peaceful delivery of wisdom and universal knowledge, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I actually upload free workshops every single week. So something that you need to know about my work i know that a lot of you might be tuning into this video or to my work for the first time is that my work is very quantum it is frequency based this video is a frequency transmission so it's important to receive it with not only your mind but especially with your body so you're going to be able to listen to it several times um, the replay is going to be available because in order to break through these spells they primarily exist in your body and your energy bodies. Because, you know, a lot of these mental ideas, they won't be new to you, but you'll be like, why am I working through poverty spells and mindset things all the time and still not changing my reality? It's because these things are stored in the subconscious, in the programming, in the body's multidimensional layers. And we've had so much slavery trauma on this planet Every single aspect of the false matrix soul prison is pointed towards making us slaves and powerless. And so that's why there's so many layers and levels of this. And in order for you to move through all these clearings that this live transmission is going to offer you, every aspect of this video, I'm going to tell you things. It's going to be information, but it's really a frequency transmission. So when you listen with your body, you're going to receive the medicine. And it might take many, many, many listens to actually bring the frequencies all the way through your body. Watching this video once is not going to change anything, but I want you to pay attention to how everything I say makes you feel and really listen with your body and take the suggestions that I make, like write a lot of notes, okay? I'm going to be going through a lot of content, a lot of suggestions. You want to write them all down. And what you need to do is actually create space to schedule in times when you're going to practice those things. That's what's going to change your life. That's the thing is that we intake information and wonder why our life is not changing, but our patterns, our frequency, the trauma in our body, those are the things that are subconsciously generating our reality. So one thing is that you can receive a three of my full length Oracle healing ceremonies for free. These are 30 to 60 minute long shamanic energy healing sessions that address the three primary money blocks, money wounds, persecution wounds, and psychic attacks. You can find that in the description of this YouTube video or in the link in bio on Instagram. These are accessible to you for free as a supplement to this workshop, right? We're going to be primarily talking about these ideas in this video. If you want to use these healing sessions as a supplement to work with over the next period of time, you can get that download link in the description. So get ready to take hella notes. <laughs> because this process took me 12 years to master, right? I can teach it to you in 12 weeks and the energy exchange is $555 and that's an absolute steal because every other course like this in the industry that I have taken several of myself that don't go into these multiple dimensional depth as I do, go for five to $10,000 and that's just the truth. If you look for a 12 week entrepreneurship class that takes you through all these levels, um, that's how much it costs in the industry. I'm literally offering it to you for $555 because that's my sole agreement to my family. I'm never going to increase that amount, no matter how popular or famous or whatever I get, because I just, that's my base level of energy exchange and how I feel honored. And in this process of co-honoring, I want you to understand how much value this is, but in this video, I'm literally going to be sharing with you every single thing that I'm going to be going through my course. And that is because my truest soul intention is to help every light worker break through the poverty curse. 
And that is what I'm going to help you do in this live video. I don't hold back in my live offerings and my free offerings. As many of my followers know, all of my teachings are available on YouTube. They're just not as well organized. There's not a lot of more in-depth support, but you know, if you are in a place where you can't afford my offerings, my YouTube channel is full of 50 different workshops and healings and all sorts of stuff. Okay. I don't hold back because I'm here for service a hundred percent of the way. So even if you can't or won't be joining my class, if you listen very carefully and take a lot of notes, you will receive everything you need to guide yourself through this process like I did when I couldn't afford to learn from someone else. And at the end of the day, actually, no amount of money can actually give you personal agency. And that is what it's going to take for you to change your situation. If you have a true desire to change and to heal and to really help the world, with that fire inside of you, you can do anything with or without anyone's help. And without that personal agency, you can pay somebody hundreds and thousands of billions of dollars and nobody's going to be able to do anything for you. So this is the key is that people say, well, why don't you offer your things for free? And I say, I do. It's all available on YouTube. If you want me to personally help you, you're going to have to give me energy exchange because that's how you honor. But if you just want to learn, everything's available here in this video and also on my YouTube channel. So... That being said, let's dive in. I want to begin with a brief story of my generational poverty wounds because my father was born in the poorest regions of China. And as you know, there are billions of people in China and this competition is so high. My father was born as this poor farmer, right? He was like the only person in his family that went to school and then fought his way to going to high school, fought his way to going to university, fought his way to move to the city. This man came from the poorest of the poor in a very um, little developed place in China. And that's where he started. And so at nine years old, um, when I was nine years old, we emigrated to Canada. And both my parents began to peel chickens at minimum wage. And I remember living in basements. My parents were working. My dad had three jobs. And that was when my little brother was conceived. And I literally watched my immigrant parents struggle and worry to support me and my brother. And then being the cosmic starseed soul that I am, I became the less than 1% Chinese immigrant children that actually drop out of high school because I just couldn't stand it. My soul is here for something different. Um, but it was very difficult to obviously go against the grain, go against my family and the culture. Um, but through the ages of 16 to 18, I had a spiritual awakening and just realized that my soul had a very unique purpose, that I was here to bring life into this world, to help humans remember how beautiful everything was. But at that time, I moved out, you know, when I was 16, and I spent the next seven years couch surfing. My, my parents kicked me out when I was 16 because of my rebellion and my star-seated soul. We have a really good relationship now, but they just couldn't understand me, you know, being the immigrant family that we were. And so I spent the next seven years couch surfing, homeless, going to parties, living in my dad's car. I really believed that money was evil and I was really too spiritual for money. Um, during that time, Mother Earth started whispering to me, the dragons and Mother Earth showed me that I'm a creator, a leader, a visionary, and I had a powerful purpose. She asked me and showed me a vision of these 200 planetary ascension healing hubs that I would help bring into life that would not only help humans heal, but also the earth and the soil and humans' relationship to the life and the multidimensionality of the earth, and maybe even most importantly, heal the earth's grids that has been so severely damaged through the Stargate Wars and all the different things that's happened. And she showed me that once you heal the earth's grids, everything on earth will actually begin to change. So these centers are absolutely essential um, in the ascension process and the awakening and the ascension of this planet, essentially. And she showed me that there are actually millions of light workers who are called to the same destiny as me. These are incarnated elemental beings, angels, star seas, indigo, ancient wise human beings, humans with a beautiful heart and a dream for a higher future for humanity. I was shared that we all shared the same dream and the same vision. 
and we all wanted to create and birth these things into the world. But she showed me that we were tangled up in all these false matrix spells and wounds and programs and mind control that kept us powerless and stuck. And so I spent the next decade of my life intensely focused on healing all of these things so that I can create a prosperous service and mission centered business. So I, you know, you couldn't convince me to make a bunch of money if you tried. You know, I was really just homeless and living on the prayers of the world and being so joyful to bring my love and light into these different places. But then God showed me that I, I was responsible to steward these sacred lands to protect the stargates. And many of you have different missions, right? This is just what my passion is. And so when I learned, I started having these dreams that I had to put my gifts into the world and learn to earn money, to create money in rightful relationship, in right relationship, in co-honoring. And this, I wanted to generate this incredible wealth through creating healing and freedom and soul incarnation and true happiness for other people. So after that decade of healing in 2016, I started my first healing business when I got the green light from the universe because integrity is so important to me. Knowing what I'm doing is so important to me. Healing is sacred to me. To get to interact with another person's soul, this is the most sacred thing. That's why I say healers and guides and teachers for children are two of the most sacred jobs you could possibly be called onto on this earth. But in 2016, after these initiations, and I got the green light through uh, synchronicity from the universe, I started my first healing business. And since then, I have scaled from making about $600 a month doing one-on-one sessions to now creating regular six-figure months. And now I'm able to fulfill the next level of my mission of protecting sacred Stargate land and building these healing temples. Every month I send money to my parents and I also have the freedom to invest in my friends and my family and donate to causes that are meaningful to me. Um, and also other new earth technologies and businesses and even funding research, you know, into um, things that are going to evolve human consciousness. You know, it really our imagination is a limit to what we can do when we are grounded in our power. And I'm just getting started. I'm turning 30 this year. I'm so excited to be here on this earth and to see what's going to happen in the next 10 years. But if I can do it, you can do it. And in this workshop, I'm going to show you all the dimensions of how I started to make this happen for myself in absolute integrity with my heart, soul, and God's mission of heaven on earth. I'm so happy and excited to be here with all of you incredible souls. So let us dive in. Um, so the first place that I want to start with is, you know, you've been hearing me use this word spell. I'm saying poverty spell. So what the heck is a spell? Spell is like a magic incantation or a magic process, right? And when we talk about money, the reason why it is such a triggering thing that's sometimes even more difficult to talk about than our immense traumas is because not only is our money trauma related to the amount of money we can make, but is really the root of our enslavement, right? When we talk about living inside the false matrix. It's living inside of a system that has been intentionally severing us from our own soul by deceiving and tricking us and, and, and poisoning our minds and our bodies, right? And distorting our understanding of what life even is. I mean, that's a level of abuse that I coined this term called bio-spiritual abuse. And so in order for us to even reach into that level and layer of healing, we're talking about pain on a soul level, generation after generation. They have convinced that humans don't have a soul, right? If we don't know that we have a soul, we can't tune into our destiny as a soul and why we came into this life. And that's how we get trapped in this false matrix where we're disconnected from who we, who we really are. And so a spell is really something that casts an illusion. It's something that creates a glamour or pulls the wool over the eyes and shifts and distorts our perception. And one of the main ways that the spell happens is through the mind, because the mind is very vulnerable to manipulation. 
Whereas the heart is tapped into cosmic and soul intelligence, it's very difficult to deceive the heart. It's actually very easy to deceive the mind because you can almost make anything make sense intellectually. <laughs> you can almost make anyone believe anything, which is why mind control is at the center of these spells. So we have to understand and become aware of the fact that mind viruses are a thing. So mind viruses are basically inorganic or non-organic thoughts, okay? And when you don't have your own thoughts formulated, you're very vulnerable to taking on the beliefs and the thoughts of others. So think about children, right? We send children to school and they fill their brains with things or our parents are telling us these things and we grow up and we believe that trees are inanimate and we can't communicate with nature and there's no such thing as souls. And these are the beliefs that were inserted into our brain. And we were very vulnerable because as children, we haven't installed our own soul's beliefs and, and thoughts yet. So we had this permeability and we realize that there are people in this world that are possessed who do not want you to be successful they want you to be victims and poor right own nothing and you'll be happy sound familiar so those people have intentionally programmed into you these particular beliefs and mind viruses that block you from success and one really great way for you to discern what is your organic mind and what is the inorganic mind. Okay, I hope you guys are taking notes because this is so important and applies to every area of your life. The organic mind is curious innately because there are things that the organic mind truly knows from the soul, from the heart. This is called gnosis, your deep inner knowing. So because it has the safety of its own eternal inner knowing, it can it feels safe to explore. It's open to the perspectives of others. It doesn't have a need to control or condemn what other people think because it's innately secure and confident in what it knows. So for me, for example, everything I'm sharing with you, it, I don't really care if you believe me or not believe me or if you completely disagree, as long as you can hold respect and we can still respect each other's humanity, I don't really care. I don't have a need to convince you of anything. I'm just sharing with you from my inner knowing. The inorganic mind is the program, disease mind. And because it's lost its connection to its inner knowing, it has a need to cling on to things that it knows to give it a sense of safety. Does that sound familiar? This is when people have a need to convince you that they're right and you're wrong and whatever they think is the, the real way. And it really comes from a deep-seated insecurity of having been severed from their own inner knowing because the person that is in their inner knowing will respect that in another person. So this is how hiding our inner gnosis, severing humans from their inner knowing, from their soul, and then creating fear is used as a weapon to control the mind. Okay, so this is why they take away your inner knowing, they make you give away your authority, and they fill your head with this false knowing that they're inserting into you. So I'm telling you all of this because I sincerely wish for you to be free of the false matrix mind control. Because when we are all powerful and wealthy and in love and in unity and successful in our mission, that is my prayer for every single one of us. And so... Let's now go into some of these programs. The first one is wealth and success is only for lucky people. Um, and the second one that is connected to this is everything is by chance, right? This is like atheism. And this is how atheism is one of the most um, ridiculous and evil mind control spells because it literally cast the spell of, of non-belief in people of God. And that's what severs and cuts them off from God, which is their source of knowing and their source of abundance, their source of guidance and love and protection and all the good things in life. So when we feel this, you know, there's absolute chaos, there's no organizing principle, there's no God looking after everything and wealth and success is only for some people that are lucky when this is our belief, and you know, maybe this is not in your mind, but feel for it, scan for it in your body, right? It's like, oh, I don't have a chance. 
because there's 7 billion people on this planet and only a few people are wealthy. And so I don't have a chance to be successful. Probably not for me. So that is a mind control virus because the truth is that you are a creator being and the world is created for you to live in alignment with your destiny. And so when you have a soul purpose and when you move forward in that co-creativity with source, everything that's meant for you is going to come. And so that is the true organic mind signal that heals this false virus. The next part is that money is evil and all rich people are evil. Um, of course, there are evil people in the world, but there's also plenty of really amazing people in the world. And so many of these people are innovative. Our creators have changed human life forever, right? People that believe in changing the future. And everything that we have in the world, like all these roads, every time I'm driving, I'm just like, how do we build so many roads? Somebody dreamt, you know, enough to inspire us to build up these roads. And now we can drive from Antarctica to the tip of South America. I mean, that's just incredible to me. And that's just only one of the things that human beings were able to achieve through working together and organizing our resources. And so this belief that money itself is evil and all rich people are evil, it really is something that blocks us because it's like, well, I don't want to be evil. I'm not evil. I don't want people to see me as evil. I don't want people to not trust me. Well, I guess it's safer for me to just be broke because being broke makes me a good person, right? And that's like the biggest crock of bullshit I've ever heard. <laughs> I don't know about you. And I'm sorry if this energy, I, I have a very impactful aura. My aura is built for transformation and for transmuting these things. So if you're starting to get a little triggered, know that there's so much love here. All I want for you is your success. All I want for you is God's gifts that were placed inside of you to be maximized to their most highest potential so everyone on earth can benefit from them. And that is my most integral and true heart's prayer. Just know that. Okay, so this is an interesting one because in 2015, when I first started visit, getting visitations and going up into dreams and communicating and receiving the guidance that I had to create all this money to steward sacred land, um, one day I was meditating, praying in front of my altar, and all of a sudden my hands came up like this, like a lotus. And I saw this green goddess, she's like knocking on the window. And I'm like, what the? She's like, she opened, I opened the window. She's like, oh my gosh. I'm like, who are you? She's like, I'm the money goddess. All of these crazy, evil psychopaths are trafficking me and hoarding me and using me for horrible things. And all I want to do is build heaven on earth. I want to do what you're doing. I want to transform the medical system. I want to build these healing centers. And none of the light workers will hear me because they got their pockets sealed and their zippers zipped and they won't let me in. <laughs> And that's when I was like, I had this mind blowing moment. And she started teaching me that the reason why we resist money is because we've not seen role models. Everyone that has money, they say money and power corrupts. Absolutely. But I just didn't feel like that was true for me. Ever since I was a little girl, I knew that I had this incorruptible pearl inside of my heart, and that is my love and devotion to God, and my love and devotion to the eternal, and my love and devotion to this earth and its beauty since its conception. I have an angelic soul through and through, and nothing in this world could possibly seduce me because I already have that inside of my heart. And so I, I still live with just two one pair of summer shoes and one pair of running shoes. And I really don't care about anything but doing what I'm supposed to be doing here on this earth. And also, you know, maybe rose body oil that really helps me, you know, things that really make me feel good so I can serve. But anyway, um, she taught me that we can build architecture around our business, around our mission, so that it keeps us in integrity with our heart's prayer, so that we can always be living in integrity with these structures that we create ourselves, that we establish with God in reflection that is almost like our own sacred heart laws. And I'm gonna go into that. These are one of the dragon teachings that are a part of the scroll. 
you know, that teach us about right relationship, right? Right relationship with ourself, with the world, with our clients, right energy exchange, co-honor. Like when somebody offers me something and I value and it changes my life, I really, I sometimes do pay double for it, right? Because it's like, I want to encourage that brilliance in the world. I want to support them. And this energy of co-creativity, it's so infectious. And so she started teaching me about building this architecture around my temple business. And I started to allow that to percolate, even though it really took me a few years to accept it. Because, you know, being broke makes me a good person was something that I really attached to having been you know, kicked out and broke for like seven years of my life, living without money, you know, really um, resisting that responsibility. And I really attached to that. And I judged people who were spiritual and had money um, because I really believe that, you know, it's not spiritual to charge money and I won't be trusted that people will think I'm a charlatan. That what was going to people, what are people going to think? They're not going to trust me anymore if I have money. And a lot of this comes from this fallen religious programming, right? Again, because the spiritual people are the most powerful people, are the people that are mostly going to try to change things in this world. So if they can disempower the spiritual people, then of course it's going to work in their favor. So they created religion, and this exists in Western and Eastern religions, in Buddhism and Christianity, Right, that to be Christed and to be enlightened means you have to renounce the material. And this is such a mental concept because to me, as a woman, understanding the sacred technology of my divine bio spiritual body that God made to have this human experience, everything in this kingdom of God, these plants, the rivers, the rocks, all of it is so sacred and full of divinity. And here from my body and my consciousness to interact with, this is the sacred bond, the original true relationship, right? The right, re right relationship between humans and physicality. And interestingly enough, this is the anti-Christic, um, it's actually anti-Christic to renounce physicality because the true Christic path is the incarnation of the soul, the incarnation, the ascension of the biology in remembering the sacred um, energies and capabilities of your physicality by bringing your highest consciousness into the body and bringing the body into the place of highest reverence that God created it to be a chalice of eternal love and eternal consciousness and to be a gift to this world, to co-create with this world. And so that is a spell break for, you know, that religious program, right? That we have to renounce this material world because the truth is that you are very divine matter, mother, the divine feminine ascension mysteries, how all of these reversals are part of the patriarchy mind virus. And by the way, my definition of patriarchy is not men against women. I believe in the ultimate reality that Christ is the emergence of the union of Holy Mother, Father God, you know, divine union, um, hieroscamos alchemy. And so I understand that that is a technology in itself to sever and make one ahead of the other. I hate just as much <laughs> when people create these stories that Holy Mother is the all creator and the only creator in the universe because ultimately they're all spells that block the true Christ from emerging. So anyway, I digress. That's not the topic of today's call. Um, we don't feel safe to be powerful and wealthy because what's happened in the past is that we built all these temples and then what did, what happened? We, we proved that we were held, we were powerful and then we were murdered. Gosh, how many lifetimes have I processed of having my throat slit, being burned at the stake, being crucified, all of these things. And this is why I have that free hour long healing. It is so powerful in the description or in the link in bio if you're on Instagram, it's my free gift three sessions, one of them being the persecution wounding, okay, it, 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 it frees you from that, which is like one of the most powerful gifts that you can receive. So go take advantage of it because it is safe to be powerful. It is your birthright. And wealth is a result of your soul being in your body and generating and co-creating and building up creative energy in this dimension, okay? So 
the easy way to fix and heal all these things is to feel where it comes up in your body. So maybe you want to go back and listen to that section where I go through those mind control spells and feel where it comes up in your body when I talk about it. Feel how it triggers you or makes you feel sad or brings up a certain emotion and really journal about it, feel into it, right? And then the next thing you wanna do is go into embodiment practices. For women, dancing is really powerful, or just putting up a track that you really love and moving that energy out of you and bringing in the true frequency, the organic frequency from your organic mind. And that's the thing. Sometimes we go through life and we have all these beliefs and energies and we just take it. We're like, oh, I have this trauma. It's in my body. And we just go through life and we're like, oh, that's just part of me. That's just there. But we don't realize that we can literally pause this video right now, go put on a track and dance and move the energy right out and speak and pull the true organic frequencies into our body by simply becoming aware of these energies and taking action, creating container, creating a medicine container. Okay, so this is a dragon transmission of your inner power, true power. This is a trigger word for a lot of people, right? Because we've experienced tyranny and we experience people abusing their power. But what is true power? What is divine power? It comes from self-trust. And self-trust comes from knowing yourself, know thyself. And that comes from integrity. Women ask me, Z, how do I get rid of imposter syndrome? I say, well, you establish capacity. You establish integrity. When you know what you're doing and you're good at what you're doing, you're here to do it on behalf of creation, there's no need to feel insecure. But if you're, if you're not in 100% integrity and you're like, well, I, just, I really just want to make money or I really want to quit my matrix job and you have all these selfish motivations as the primary motivation, you're going to feel like you need to question yourself. And most of the time, it's not that light workers have that. It's just that they haven't established that knowing. They haven't established that agreement inside of themselves and fully recognize the incorruptible purity of yourself inside of you. You're still scared that, you know, if you get really wealthy and powerful, you're going to get distorted and they're going to come after you. And so you don't trust yourself. For me, I know that nothing could seduce me in this whole world because I already have the highest and truest wealth inside of my heart. And all I'm here to do is transform and alchemize that into any resource to do what I'm here to do. So here are some programming partners, right? Just true frequencies that you can use. I am a creator being and I have infinite resources at my disposal to serve my highest creation to serve my soul's destiny, to serve heaven on earth, to serve the liberation of humanity. Like that feels so different than I can't trust myself or I'm scared of being powerful. Right? The next one is God is the highest authority. And as long as I live in alignment with divine will, I allow floodgates of support, love and resources to come to me. So this is about creating sacred laws. Right? It's not just about empty trust, like, okay, I'm going to make a billion dollars and I'm just going to believe, be delusional about the fact that I'm so in devotion. Like, no, I'm going to create a structure in my life so that I'm actually living in integrity to that. And when I live in that integrity, I can trust myself. And I really don't believe we should just automatically trust ourselves. <laughs> I think we should actually, you know, really be who we say or want to be. So, Next one is, instead of saying money is evil, we're going to say money means lives changed, the earth healed, impact made, heaven on earth in the making. Is money the only thing that does these things? Of course not. But money is part of that. Money gets to be part of that. Money gets to mean these things, even if everything else can mean these things too. Money means lives changed, impact made, heaven on earth in the making. Okay, money means freedom, support, and safety for your family and the liberation of your ancestors from poverty, right? Money means freedom for child slaves. That's one of my biggest passions is creating safety and rescuing, um, creating rescue missions. Okay, so I've always donated to these organizations and I really am working on creating sanctuaries and 
I'm even working on creating research because I am ultimately a multidimensional doctor. I'm here to su support the healing of the grids. That's why I'm a star gatekeeper and I'm buying the land. By the way, this is <laughs> a note to all you spiritual people who are like, I'm an oracle. I'm too spiritual to do 3D stuff. Like I literally spend hours in the Akash every day doing genetic healing on the earth. And then I learn how to build ad channels because I'm a multidimensional being and I'm capable of being a full spectrum being. I build my own ads because it's a skill that I want to learn so I can teach you guys how to do it in the most effective way because technology is here to serve us. And I spend hours a day meditating in the Akash, doing quantum healing work for the earth, for DNA of humanity. That's actually my main profession. That's my main job. Okay. So I, I believe that through my research, I, I'm already hot on the tracks of learning how to cure pedophilia. Like I am here to multidimensionally cure pedophilia. I think that's really important because ultimately it's about recognizing that there's a demonic force that's creating these viruses in human consciousness. And that includes phone addictions. It includes video games. It includes depression and and anxiety, right? But it also includes like the far end of the spectrum, which is like this needing to abuse other people. So I, this is what I do on my spare time. <laughs> this is my hobby is figuring out how to, how to heal DNA on that level. And so the land, this is why the land wants me to steward it because I understand its interdimensional geometries and architectures and the stargates. So I can actually be a really good steward. I can, I can um, support the land and like, okay, here's where we're going to build this. Here's where water is going to come out. You know, I have this telepathic communication ability with the land and things like that. So anyway, that's what I do on my spare time. But money means research being done on all those levels. Like really humans just need science, right? They need proof. So how are we going to get proof? Well, we can fund these research studies and whatever you're here to do. Like money means infinite resources for your healing growth travel expansion evolution mission whatever it is that you need to do and do i spend all my time making money no half the time i spend flying through the you know eternal realms talking to aliens and stuff so anyway i'm a creator being i'm a multi-dimensional dimensional creator being and i function like a master in all dimensions including the third one the third dimension i love it here so I have infinite resources at my disposal. And um, so, yeah, when I had these dreams of creating billions of dollars through healing the world and utilizing that money to create new earth systems from the ground up, we're talking about education systems, medical systems, foster care systems, right? Rescue systems, permaculture, farming systems. I was guided to never stay in my mind, but actually move into my body with it. Because we can literally have analysis paralysis and think, oh my God, I got all the other stuff. Like I got to start finding the land, finding the people, finding the money. And when we move into our body, that is actually when we begin to initiate our root chakra intelligence, right? To see where we are and see where the world is and do things systematically and realize that we have 50 years. You don't have to do everything all at once. Having timeline vision, understanding and mastering Saturn, instead of feeling enslaved by time or feeling that time doesn't exist and we have to escape time all the time, we're grounded in the third dimension. We say, okay, I got 10 years to make this happen. What needs to happen now? What's the first step, right? And I stayed with that practice and you know, did all the things that people usually don't want to do, <laughs> like just, you know, work hard and study and research and focus and believe in myself and believe in God, trust in God, just do everything that God tells me to do, right? That's what it takes. So anyway, it took me from 2015 to 2020, five whole years to have my first five-figure month. And that's a long time. It's not going to take you as long because I'm hoping that I can share with you these processes that took me a long time to figure out because, again, nothing gimmicky works with me with my temple business. I've had business mentors that say, like, oh, just set up the ads in this way and I'll do it and just be crickets. That's why I had to figure out how to build the ads myself because mission souls, angelic souls, spiritual temple businesses can only operate in perfect harmony divine architecture 
And so anytime I tried anything other than that, which didn't happen often, it really just didn't work. So that's why it took me so long <laughs> to figure it out. But when I did achieve my first five-figure month, uh, it allowed me to start supporting my first land project in New Mexico. And what ended up happening was I started giving all this money away. I took in homeless youths. I paid people to squat on my land. And I began to learn about creating money and the difference between creating money, holding money, and amplifying money and being responsible with money, right? Sometimes we're like, well, Z, like, why don't you just donate? Like, why don't you donate all everything? It's like, well, I have a 10-year plan, so I got to stick to it so that I can help the most number of people. And this comes with maturation and learning, you know, essentially. But um, I go into all of these. I'll, I'll share you. I'll share with you all of these tools and things in my 12-week course for women. Also talk about the second tier program, right? Once you start making money, it's like, well, how come I'm always in like scarcity still, even though I'm doing my five figure months, I'm always, I have just enough. Things will come up. I'll spend it in as I take a course and there's always not overflow. And the second tier programs is like, I can make money to serve, but money is not meant for me. My mission is funded, but I don't deserve any of it, right? If I have just enough money to keep my mission going, then people will trust me. It's still safe to have just enough. So this is really about having healthy self-care, self-love, and understanding that there's greater purpose for the frequency of overflow. And all of these transformative process you can work through in almost any kind of practices like meditation, yoga, breath work, intention, hypnosis. There's so many different things you can try. I have three free hour-long clearing ceremonies in the description you can download as a freebie to use to clear these things through your body. And I created this 12-week miracle medicine container with the help of dragons and mother, father, God to provide you the process to literally create a three-month quantum, I, I'm, a lot of people don't understand a quantum medicine container because you're essentially placed inside of this frequency field that is my aura, and you go through these healings. It's like having a three-month-long session for the price of two sessions, <laughs> okay? And people that have gone through my container know the power of them. I mean, like, before you even decide to join. Sometimes things start to happen. And I've had people have tumors disappear, like lifelong debilitating menstrual pain disappear. My recent um, client had just started her new business and had no new clients. She's freaking out. And then we had one discussion about it. And she immediately, like the next three days, brought in 10 new clients because it's all about frequency shifts. I mean, I don't even want to tell that story because it sounds like I made it up. Like to me, I'm like, really? That's, you know, almost absurd. But we've had infertility go away. You know, it's all about um, knowing that you have this healing power inside of you and it's about aligning yourself to yourself, aligning your belief systems to God and witness the miracle happen inside of you. And, I, you know, I, I'm not twisted. I didn't do any of that stuff. I just created a space, a clear container, a clear structure as I'm guided to facilitate this energy for you. I mean, it's absolutely a miraculous experience. So, by the way, it is for women, and I'm sorry to the men, but I, I am, my work is very biology-based, so I talk about the ovaries and the uterus and, you know, our sexual organs and our body and the water, like, it's just a part of the alchemical creational process. I believe that male bodies and female bodies are designed differently because we're, you know, different. We're designed and we're created different, but you are a guy, you can still download my freebies and use those. And I also hold these teachings inside of my Earth Star Academy um, that has a, a group of very wonderful men that um, what you can learn these codes and processes as well. Okay, so what we're moving on to next is the program of I Hate Life, the Earth, Humans, and the Matrix. I want to go home. Life is so hard. Life is so painful, right? Um, or running away from the matrix, like, okay, I'm just going to not have a bank account and not have a driver's license and not have a passport. And this is how I'm going to transcend the false matrix. But meanwhile, they can't leave the country. So like how much sovereignty do you have if you can't even leave the country that you're in to go somewhere else if you're guided? 
right? So we have to understand that this game is multidimensional. And here's the thing, is the truth is life is pleasure. Life is joyous. Life is pleasure is literally our divine design because when you think about it, our pleasure centers, our sexual organs, they're more in our root chakra than they are in our sacral chakra. And obviously those chakras are very connected. All the chakras are, you know, just these wavy fields of energy. But really when you talk about our pleasure organs, they are primarily in the root chakra. And when you think about it, this is a sign as a love note left to us from mother, father, God, right? Our root chakra is our connection, is our relationship with the third dimension, with physicality. And so for us to have our pleasure centers there, God is telling us <laughs> through our body's design that life is meant to be pleasurable. Life is meant to flow through our body with this ecstatic appreciation and purity and innocence. And that is what guides and nourishes this whole world, which is our role. Human beings are guardians. We're co-creators. It's We're meant to channel this creative energy and pour love into this world. And it's, gonna, it's meant to feel good as we do it. So it's not life that we hate. <laughs> it's the false matrix. And that's totally understandable because it, it, it's made to abuse divine human beings on a spiritual and essential level. This is a level of soul abuse that is so painful that's passed down generation to generation to generation. And reclaiming our organic body's pleasure and connecting to the earth in this organic and orgasmic way, this is the way that a woman taps into her highest creativity and also a man. So as a woman, what this means is healing your sexual trauma, right? Healing your fear and resistance to being here on this planet, to being in your body, healing your body dysmorphia, right? Igniting this cosmic sensitivity of our cervix. And, you know, it's so crazy that 15% of women, I, mean, I don't know where these statistics come from, I just did a Google search. 15% of women have never had an orgasm and 50% rarely do. And the thing is that nobody ever taught us that our pleasure is not just this random sexual bestial thing. It's actually a part of our divine ascension technology. The third eye of a woman is in her womb. And orgasmic pleasure is actually how this third eye gets open and open into the other realms and the other dimensions. It's how we peek into the divine realms. And this is where a lot of women get lost in the mind, right? Because you'll see women that have lots of downloads. They're so tapped in. They're just always so in tune. I have a lot of friends that are so gifted in that way, but because they're no, not grounded in the body, and their womb has not been initiated. They have poor boundaries. They don't know how to create structure. They're being pulled in all these different directions by these random energies all the time. And they're not able to fully ground into the power of their focus creation. And this is really cat medicine, okay? In the Taoist teachings, the white tiger represents the enlightened feminine embodiment because the white tigress is a woman that's tuned into her body's wisdom and intelligence, grounded in that deep creational power of the cat body. And this womb, initiated womb cavernous energy actually communicates and is one with the third eyes, one that informs the mind and guides us. And when a woman makes every decision in life from that place, I mean, it's game over for this whole world, which is why I'm holding this container and why it's womb wealth creation, right? So for those of you who are new students, I highly recommend getting the $777 package because it's a steal. You're getting every single past womb healing container, which is when we focus more on the healing components. This year, we're focusing on the embodiment and the creation components. But if you're new to this program, you know, we had 450 women in our last program where we just witness all of these miracles, literally fibers, fibroids, tumors, infertility, menstrual pain, birth trauma, like people were just having immense healing experiences. And this is again, holy mother's miracle medicine, right? It's just your body's natural ability to heal. 
I'm just an oracle. I'm just like, I've cleared and purified and devoted myself to creating the most pure and safe channel for these teachings to come through because I understand the sacredness of them. I honor the sacredness of them. And I don't, you know, gosh, I don't take credit for these ancient primordial truths that are just how our body's designed. This is just, I'm just in awe of the fact that this is the reality. So anyway, that's for women. For men, this is going to mean cultivating reverence for life, understanding that your sexuality is sacred and that you're literally a pillar of God's creation. And for you, when you are embodied in your pillar and your rod intelligence, you uphold that level of integrity in every moment of your life. And we're going to talk about the king consciousness uh, shortly in a couple of sections here. Okay, so in week two of our 12-week course, we are focusing entirely on reclaiming pleasure. If you have never had an orgasm, I am holding the prayer in this container that this is what you will experience as if you're open to it. Because a woman is incomplete until she's tapped in to her orgasmic nature and it doesn't have to be a biological physical orgasm it just needs to be an energy access point into your other dimensional consciousness through the stargate of your cervix and your womb okay so this is something that is essential because again as a mission soul as a high priestess i'm here to build a temple marketing gimmicks and you know structures and email um, schedules, <laughs> marketing schedules. Those are great. I'll teach you how to build those in the 12th week. But without this inner work, without this activation, without initiating your inner cat, enlightened cat energy, the white tiger, without embodying that womb wisdom, right? You're untethered from the greatest source of power in your life. And I, I have that prayer for you. I just know that it's going to be revelationary when you feel the delight of finally landing into the womb after moving through the fear and the pain and really taking that power back. I mean, have you noticed that there is a literal agenda to steal literal wombs in the medical system? I mean, I've heard so many stories. And just know that if you've had any sort of surgery, that your etheric womb is still there and healing the womb 2023 I actually teach you how to build a plasma etheric field there so you can still tune in and access the power of your womb and actually return it re retrieve that stolen organ and return the power back to yourself okay okay so how are you guys doing do we need to take a little break <laughs> um because gosh um, we've just been going and going and going, but okay, I love you guys so much. Let's just take a couple breaths here and tune back into our body, into our heart. I know this is so exciting. It's such a delightful and exciting energy because, you know, the dragons, it's the dragon year, my son in my belly. We're just all like, imagine what could happen if a hundred thousand light workers embodied this pure, devotional, pleasurable, ecstatic power in their bodies to serve God what would happen? And that just, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it, it definitely it excites me a lot. So um, uh, I'm here for that. Okay. So let's talk about transcending the false matrix prison. Okay. Because there's a lot of confusion about this. People think that if you just move into the mountains and pretend is not there, that you've transcended it, but we don't realize that the programs have long been inserted into your body. And this is why when people just go and start a community without doing deep inner work, taking a hundred percent responsibility, it always falls apart because the false matrix just goes with you wherever you go, because it's like literally infiltrated into your body. So transcending the false matrix prison means that you're becoming a source player and means that you're activating the source code in your consciousness and actually elevating your consciousness beyond the frequency fence. And there's a new age frequency fence. There's a spirituality frequency fence, right? The, a lot of the law of attraction stuff and the galactic federation stuff. Like, I mean, once you have tune into organic consciousness that comes from this curiosity and joy and purity inside of your heart. It's actually very easy to bounce your consciousness off of things and be like, that's not 
what is inside of me, right? Because the purity will resonate with purity. True organic intelligence will resonate with true organic intelligence. And so if it's sticky, if it gets stuck, if it's not free flowing, right? There is a frequency fence there. And what this is really saying is that we're moving into our organic mind, into your true authentic mind that comes from your own inner knowing. So even if people are saying the world's going to end or, you know, the, the government owns your birth certificate or like, you know, you need to just not have a driver's license or whatever people say, it's like, does that actually make sense to my organic intelligence? Is that what I'm truly got to do? Or am I just being influenced? Is my mind being influenced by people because I haven't figured out what my true belief systems are, right? And so people think that fighting the matrix means you have to just not participate, but really they're still enslaved because they can't, you know, they can't drive a car, they can't leave the country. They, you know, can't exchange goods and services. They definitely can't buy land, right? And they're like, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm living outside of the matrix, but are you really able to impress your power into the third dimension by living that way? And I understand that there's some people where that's their path, but I don't believe that's most people's paths. So you don't, win by pretending the matrix is not there you win by literally overriding it by being a creator by understanding that your soul is eternal and nothing of this world has any authority over you and you can still play the game but on a vibrational level you are free you are not of this world and this is how you transcend the false matrix and now you're looking back down at the matrix and you're manipulating it from the outside you're playing the game as a source player right now we are learning to clear the authority wound. So the authority wound is like this false all-seeing eye, God, surveillance, persecution wound where it's like, you know, um, if I don't, if, I, if I'm if i seen as a witch, then they're going to persecute me. They're going to take away my children. They're going to shut me down. They're going to take down my YouTube channel, right? And we have this fear that's just in our body that blocks us from even starting. And what we're understanding is that God is the highest authority. Do we truly know that through every single cell of our body? And when I say God, I don't mean the false distorted gods. If you have a God trauma, we actually do a lot of healing around that in the previous Healing the Womb containers as well. One of the coolest testimonials that I got from many women in that container was that, you know, Z, I thought I was joining to heal my sexual trauma, but what I got out of this course was now I feel like I've harmonized and established my relationship with God. And it, it's just so touching. Like, I can't imagine doing any greater thing with my time than to support people in healing that wound. Because again, God, our love for God is why we're here, <laughs> is what is empowering us, is what's protecting us, right? And so we're always going to be guided if we have that open channel of communication with God, understanding that God is the highest authority. And when we have that, you know, we're not trying to do the mission without God. And that's when a lot of light workers get in trouble, right? It's like our, we're allowing our mind to make decisions in our business, to make our content. It's like, what's going to, we're thinking like, well, what's going to go viral? What are people going to want? Instead of leaning into our heart and our womb, right? Our, our big cat wisdom. I mean, like, okay, like what am I, what is in the highest? What does God want me to do? Because when we're actually flowing and creating from the organic, we're protected from that stuff because God is all-knowing and this intelligence is much greater than that. When we start relying on the mind, that's when we're battling the mental control field with the mind and we're trying to do God's mission without God. We're trying to do it ourselves, right? So I think that, you know, that was just that speaks for herself. But anyway, <laughs> again, I have just um, amazing persecution, liberation, healing in the description and in my bio and my Instagram, these three full length uh, Oracle sessions that are free for you to use to work through these energies. I mean, even if you don't take any of my courses or don't watch any of my videos ever again, I just want you to go and get those because they've been life-changing for me. People send me 
pictures of themselves crying. Again, I can't even take credit for that. Like, it's just touching to me. I'm just in awe, just alongside everyone else, how powerful and potent our bodies heal when it comes in touch with our true original essence of divine intelligence, right? That's what's doing the healing is you coming back into alignment with yourself. So that's what's available for you for free. Go get it. Um, I love you. So now let's talk about common light worker cop-outs. <laughs> okay. Cause usually these are disempowerments and money wounds that are hiding in righteousness. Like light workers that are using these things, these beliefs to hide from their own disempowerment. So like, I want to build this amazing healing center, but I'll just wait for someone to give me money. Like a millionaire or a billionaire out there, it's going to love what, I, what I'm working on. They're just going to fund it. And I'm not saying that you can't manifest a funder or somebody that gives you money. Like part of my role is to generate energy and, and abundance. And one day I will be creating a fund to, you know, because these 200 centers, they're really the centers of that everybody's dreaming about. I'm just going to create billions of dollars so we can make it happen. So one day I am going to be funding these things. And when somebody comes to me and they're like, Z, this is what I want to do. I'm like, well, have you thought about, you know, these things? What about practicalities? And what are your skills? And these people have been sitting on their bums waiting, and I'm not going to be giving any money to those people because capacity to be responsible is a gradual process that develops through action through entrepreneurship, through putting yourself out there. So I'd rather see somebody that's been trying their best for 10 years and they've gained all these skills and they just couldn't make the money. I would, you know, 100 times out of 100, any millionaire, any self-made millionaire or billionaire is always going to resonate with those people because they understand what it takes. You know, you look at me, you're like, wow, Z, you know, you have all these businesses. It's like, you have no idea how many hours I've put in this is all I do. I'm obsessed with my mission. I've read countless books. I've built, I build all of my own websites. I build my own, you know, templates and, and all of these things. I have like hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel. And I built those skills so that, you know, if I were to come into connection with a billionaire, they're going to see a grounded capacity in me, right? So, in this sense, skill is maybe even more valuable than money. It's about a mindset. It's about realizing that you are a creator being. So what are you responsible for? Sometimes people say, well, I'm a visionary. I'm an oracle. And I say, well, you're also a human. <laughs> and so you're also responsible for establishing your vision on earth. Stop deferring responsibility. Start recognizing when you're putting responsibility onto other people and start walking. In mastery. I'm not saying we have to do everything ourselves. I'm just saying the more that we put in, the more we can, the faster we can get this all going, right? Like instead of giving responsibility, how about we take on more responsibility? How about we say, I can, and I'm going to take on more responsibility so that the future generations didn't have to do as much. And that is the mindset and the architecture of truly being in service, truly being devoted, not waiting for handouts, not waiting for people to come out of the woodworks. And you say, well, what do I have to bring to the table? And if I feel like I need to work on some of my skills, how devoted, how much of my time am I actually putting towards doing those things? Right? So this is one of the dragon teachings of mastery and personal agency. And this is really creator training. I call it creator rehabilitation, honestly, because this world has trained those things out of us, right? We've just been taught since school that we have to listen to an authority and just do what we're told, that we never, like, we never learn how to think for ourselves. We never learn how to make a plan and, and um, actualize those plans on ourselves. So this is an engine in our solar plexus that we're learning to heal. This is the creator rehabilitation, which goes into our inner divine union alchemy, our inner feminine, our inner masculine energies are a free energy creational technology. And when they work in union with each other, our inner feminine is so inspired and have all these infinite creative ideas and is free flowing and, you know, thinks outside of the box, right? The, uh, creates from joy and it's, in, it's inspired by beauty. Now, that energy must be paired 
with a inner masculine consciousness that's able to pull that inspiration, be inspired by that inspiration, and is moved to tears, moved to agency, moves like, I only want to make your dreams come true. I, I want to heal the world. I want to make your dreams come true, right? The inner feminine is like, I want to create these temples. I want to help these people. I want all the children to be free. The inner masculine is like, I love you and I honor you and I treasure you so much. I'm going to do whatever it takes for us to make that happen. So hijacked masculine is when we don't believe in ourselves. We're insecure. We don't feel worthy of what our feminine desires. We are people pleasing. We're leaking energy or we're doing things just to achieve, right? When we're doing things out of an innate lack instead of inspiration, and our masculine is just in this immature place or is trying to prove that he's a really good little slave, right? Or he's just doing things just to get clout, like just to look good, just to appear a certain way. And these are all ways that our inner masculine is wounded. And for most divine feminines, it is the insecurity. I'm not good enough. Right? And that comes from a father wound because our dads are supposed to be the ones that installs that sense of confidence inside of us. Feel that safety, like this world is safe for me to fully be myself and share my gifts with the world. And I am here to, and everybody's going to appreciate that because I, I, I deserve to do it. If we don't have a dad that was that supportive and, and held that container for us, we just never developed the correct masculine architecture. So the enslaved inner feminine, on the other hand, right, has the princess syndrome, thinks that other people should do everything for her, thinks that she deserves wealth and abundance and all this manifestation just because she exists. And I'm not saying we don't deserve wealth and prosperity just for existing, but there is an energy of like this princess, like entitlement. And that's not the energy of a true queen who's here to be of service, who's here to meet a higher destiny right? The enslaved feminine also feels like she has to prostitute her creativity against her will, against her soul desires. She has to use her creativity to like make projects that she doesn't even like, like working at a, a, a factory or like working somewhere at a company that she's not really fully appreciated, but she has to prostitute her time and energy there or prostituting her creative intelligence, Right. And then after many years of doing that, a lot of women feel now blocked. They feel blocked from their ability to actually create from authentic joy. And then because they have that innate lack, they think they've lost that. They'll feel jealous and intimidated by the success of others. And jealousy, you know, is really just this affirming of lack inside of us. Right. We only feel jealous if we see someone have something that we believe we don't have, but is something that we want. So when we realize that we're, we're jealous, but it's because we do have that thing, we're just blocking ourselves from realizing that we have it, then we're on the path of reclaiming our authentic creative power. So in my course, we're going to be spending three whole weeks, right, working with a dragon squirrel of the inner king and the inner queen codes. Some people are triggered by this word king and queen because they're like, why would we want to dominate over others? And that's the false king. That's the false queen, right? The true original grail king and queens, they're the ones that have devoted their whole life to being of service to people in a greater way than anyone else has. And that's why they're immortalized. People love them because they just show up with such love, such diligence. They're always in the front of the work line, right? They're leading by example. And when I was a little girl, I would always have this little whisper in my ear, this like Asian auntie. She would say, a true princess takes care of her people. And I was like, isn't that the most Asian thing you've ever heard? But anyway, she'd come and say that and she would leave. And then she would come back and say that a week later. And I it became this constant experience that I had and what I believe was this original architecture was being built from the time when I was very little to be of service and you know when I was four my mom would tell me these stories like when I, my auntie was to come over I would just like get everybody ice water and like give people massages like I came in just knowing that this is what I'm here to do and as I grew older I realized there were all these distortions on the king and the princess like oh in, in the west when people say oh you're such a princess it's like this derogatory term that refers to the entitled woman. And it's like, that's not what a true princess is. A princess is 
a queen in training, a woman, a girl, a maiden that is working on herself, right? And embodying true nobility and um, initiating herself into right virtues, embodying maturity so that one day she can take on responsibility on behalf of her entire country. And that's what the star seas and the avatars are capable of doing. This is what is called a planetary leadership contract. It's like, okay, you wanna change the world? What kind of person do you have to become to hold that level of responsibility for God's mission? How can you become a highly trusted individual in the eyes of God? Of course, by living in integrity, right? Being true to yourself. And that is the true code of the inner king and the inner queen. And we spent a whole three weeks working on this because obviously this is the architecture to generating wealth because, you know, why should you have wealth? Why should you get to generate billions of dollars? I know in the false matrix, they say, well, it's manifestation. You can get whatever you want. And I say in a right architecture in society, clearly the world is showing us that not everybody <laughs> should have billions of dollars. And the architecture in the ley line systems that we're going into is about this integrity, about this maturity. It's like the more responsibility you're capable of holding in your body through your inner work, the more responsibility God is going to place in your hands because this is not about you and what you want. It's about where we're collectively going on a planetary level. And that's the, what we're all here for. So, um, of course, this is something that I've been working on for 10 years. So you can do this on your own. But what you can move through in three weeks inside of my container is probably going to be more than in three years on your own because the group field is so powerful when we come together in this group prayer. And there's this dragon energy. My son is transmitting these original king codes. My daughter is sharing these original queen codes. And you have the knowledge, the support, and the guidance to help you move mountains, you know, if you decide that this is the time to do that work. So... Finally, the next thing that we're going to talk about is clearing slavery out of the flesh. This is such an important component of all of this because you can have all the spiritual understanding and all of the mental understanding and all the concepts, right? All the terminology. But if your body is still holding the frequency and the energy and the trauma of being a slave, then it's just not going to work. And part of this is, you know, physical labor slavery, it's famine, it's sexual trauma, sexual slavery. Women have gone through like eras of time in society where they were basically sex slaves to, to men inside of marriages, especially, you know, in my lineage in China, the world was very patriarchal. And so we're talking about three to 8,000 years of slavery programming, trauma, energies that we are clearing out of our body. So this is the soma muscular memory complexes of the soft tissue, the blood, the flesh, the bones, and the patterns that are so deep. It's like, well, why am I still people pleasing? Like, why am I still not trusting myself, right? After all these years of reading books and understanding these things, it's because it's so deep in your biology. So this is when we are rewarded for being a good little slave, for work, overworking to the point of self-wounding and exhaustion and martyrdom because we feel like we're only worthy of being alive or successful if our body is totally drained and exhausted. I'm only valuable if I am a martyr, if I martyr myself for others. If it hurts, then I'm doing a good job. <laughs> okay, and then this creates this addiction to overworking because our adrenals and our hormones have actually been hijacked and we're addicted to the stress hormones instead of creating from that ecstatic pleasure and the right creational hormonal system that will create, you know, balance and peace and appreciation and gratitude and inspiration. We're in a state of survival and creating out of fear. And this is like the inversion. Our body light work, um, our body light, our light body template has been inverted through the slavery and the programs. And so the way that we heal this is actually through working with the Aurora energy. So there's this Aurora Pearl technology that came through in a, a ESO workshop last year. And essentially, we're going to go through this process of 
installing an Aurora Pearl in all 12 of our hormone producing organs. And what that's going to do is going to restore its original creator template in our physical body so that we are operating from eternal worth and union with God and peace, gratitude, you know, so that we're just free, we're, we're allowing the flow of inspiration to come into our body. It is about coming into receptivity because when we're in survival, we're leaning on our mind where we can be hijacked. You see how the um, slavery matrix kind of, it all works together. <laughs> When you are enslaved and when you are addicted to your, your overworking and then you're relying on the mind and the mind is vulnerable to mind control is just this whole cluster. So when we learn to heal on a, a body level, we also resolve on a mental level. And this is when we actually embody the original template of our creator codes. So lastly, we're going to just briefly talk about you know, the architecture of building a temple business, because we realize that these poverty spells are part of the false gold grid, right? The spell of carelessness, which is when we live our life and we don't clean our room and we just, you know, it's like, oh, whatever, like the world's falling apart anyway, why should I care, right? Um, they just spill something and we're just like too lazy to clean it up. Like that energy of carelessness it's a poverty spell because you it blocks you from your template of guardianship. Okay, and then we have the smell of gluttony. Gluttony is like endless consuming. This could be consuming of content, scrolling, right? Consuming sweets and food, buying clothes and things you don't need to fill that void inside of you. And this is a poverty spell because it's built on an infinity, an infinity of lack. <laughs> it's installing an infinity of lack inside of you that can never be filled. And then you just got to fill it all the time with gluttonous behavior, whether that is scrolling on your phone, right? Because you're filling the void of connection um, or to food or to shopping or whatever it is. So then we have the spell of poverty, right? The spell of sickness, the spell of lust, right? disrespect for sacred creation energy, the spell of greed, selfishness, separation, disconnection. These are all energies that we have inside of our consciousness that we must correct strand by strand by paying attention to how we are living in accordance to our heart's sacred laws. So the dragon teachings here is about the genetic sacred laws of the heart temple, which is how God originally created us to be these Christed beings of compassion and peace, and love, inspiration, creativity, joy, innocence. That's the architecture of a, a steward, a guardian of sacred creation. And when you mold yourself, when you develop yourself, when you heal yourself and you embody that level of mastery inside of your body, God is going to want to fill your bank account because he knows that that's not your money. That will be God's money. Right, God can now use whatever money is in your bank account to fulfill whatever needs this mission needs to happen. <clears throat> and I really believe that that is at the core of all of this. This is womb wealth creation is like, how are we building our womb of our body, the temple of our body into a bank? Because our body is a bank. <clears throat> our body is a bank for cosmic creation consciousness for, and this is a path of the avatar, right? It's like the avatar is here to embody more and more and more divine love, more and more divine peace, God's consciousness in the body. And so it's funny when people are like, oh, I'm Jesus. And I'm like, okay, it's cool. But then in life, they are not loving, they're rude, you know, they're not caring and they're selfish and all these things. It's like, well, isn't that kind of disrespectful? Because, you know, some people say, Z, are you pointing? And I say, no, I'm Z. I don't feel that we get to just say we're this being in our past life because we're always who we are right here, right now. We are who we are and we're here to initiate ourselves. We're here to become, we're here to look up to the previous masters, but we're here to become the highest level of mastered, embodied, integral coding, avatar templating, so that God can pour power and wisdom, right? And creative potential and money into our body and we can hold it with honor, with devotion, 
with a heart ablaze for one thing and one thing only, and that is to serve humanity and to co-create heaven on earth. And when you are living in accordance with that, when that energy is the, the foundation of your body, you will see wealth pour into your body like nothing before. And that's the only way it's going to be able to work for an angelic soul. And I hope that this is just setting you on fire and making you so excited right now. So I think that really come, brings my workshop to an end here. So I'm just going to say that in my course, an intensive 12 week journey, that is actually 10 full Saturdays and Q and A's on every Wednesday. Those of you who've been inside of my containers know that I don't hold back and we just go for three to five hours breaking down key concepts, right? Because I really am a well of knowledge and we're going to work on resolving these things on a somatic mind control, etheric implants, overlays and distortions. We're going to work on emotional and spiritual growth. And then I'm actually going to be teaching you the practical part of creating an actual high demand offer or product, right? By working in alignment with like the original tree of life economic systems of nature, we're, we're, stop, we're stepping out of thinking about like, well, what do I want to create? We're going to think about what is needed, what's going to create an impact, what's really going to help people and allow that to be the North Star, right? We're going to learn how to curate a product and you're going to learn how to communicate, right? We're going to talk about soul-led marketing, sales, you know, entrepreneurship, like these terminologies that we're so scared of, there's a way to take it all back and make the architecture in correct alignment with integrity and with your pure angelic heart. And finally, we're going to have a masterclass on creating your essence brand. This is really a visibility training is like, how can you communicate to the marketplace to be received? Like, how do you want people to feel when they meet you? What is the foundational? Like, what is the frequency of your temple and then we're going to create a social media plan um, which involves you know building out your youtube and instagram and also your email list so that you know and we're creating like a content map based on your organic intelligence so that you have a structure like a lot of women have no shortage of things they want to share but because they don't have a structure, they just never do it. So we're going to create a content tree. So personally, I have a content tree and I've just sat down one day. My inner masculine just interviewed my inner feminine. She's like, what do you want to share with the world? I just poured it all out. And then my inner feminine, my inner masculine organized it in a structure. And now I can just refer to this tree whenever I, you know, don't feel like posting something just out of off the cuff. You know, we, we are human beings. We're not always going to be ready to do that. But when we create structure around our expression, we um, can lean on that. So that um, wraps up my masterclass. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you're receiving the frequency transmissions of the medicine that is here and that you're feeling that shift in your body because that's really what we're after, right? Just being in my aura, you're feeling those frequency embodied in my body. So sometimes I will pay, you know, big amounts of money just to get a session with certain people, just to be in their field. I mean, I don't, like, you know, I've, I've had sessions where they gave me like a plan. I'm like, I'm not going to follow that business plan because it's not going to work for me. But I just wanted to be in their energy. So if anything, that will be worth it in and of itself. Um, but if you're not planning on joining my course, it's totally okay. I honor and respect that. I'm only calling in the souls that are literally sweating right now, knowing that this is going to absolutely change your life. And the links are in the description and in my link tree. Go get your freebies. And um, yeah, I'm going to actually check in here in the chat and see how you guys are doing see if there's any questions in here see how people are doing on instagram okay yeah how are you guys feeling please let me know if this um, transmission was activating for you 
Um, Katie says, will the recording be posted? Yes, it's going to be at the same link. It's on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And so, yeah, I'm just scrolling through to see if there's any questions. Please let me know if this frequency has been inspiring and transformative for you. Because, again, that's just really <laughs> all I'm here for. You know, if you don't feel this is inspiring, I don't want you in my container. I don't want you to give me money. I have, you know, rejected millions of dollars in the past for my land because integrity and alignment is everything for me. And so I only want to work with the women that are just lit up by this. And I'm going to give you my all. So I want to know how you guys are feeling. And if you're feeling that shift in your body, um, and uh, I just truly love you guys so much. Oh. Avalon says, we burning right now, sis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Miriam's ready to jump into abundance. Jenna's wanting to participate. Jade is feeling inspired. Um. Sorry, it's scrolling kind of fast. Ariel is on fire and she's feeling elated. So Wild says, do you offer other business guidance? Is that the last portion of the container? So yes, it is the last portion of the container. Um, it's the last three whole weeks. And my plan is to have a, a basically a structure for a business and a structure for your social media plan so you're ready to just launch your business and then i'm probably going to offer like so i had five one-on-one -on -one mentorship um positions for this course and it kind of sold out within three days this is what used to happen to me when i did one-on-ones um years ago i haven't done one-on-ones in three years because i had a baby and it just became you know not feasible for me but um in 2021, I opened my books and I got booked out for an entire year in like two days. And so I know that this energy that flows through me that I don't really take credit for whatsoever. I just feel really honored. You know, I, I take credit for the part that I really do my best. I meditate every single day. I live in accordance. I'm kind to people. I just try to be a good person. And I understand why this energy would want to flow through me. And I'm just trying to say that, like, I'm not special. If you guys just live in integrity with your inner purity and trust that, then this is going to happen to you because God wants to flow through people like you, right? It's been so long that the tyrannical people and like the tricky people and the deceptive people have been getting all this power or the grids are flipping and the inversions are dissolving. So now God is looking for divine angels with a pure heart, just like you to pour abundance through. And so Anyway, I'll probably op uh, be opening like 20 spots for business mentorship um, towards the end of like the second half of the mentorship. I, I don't imagine I'll be able to have any more spots than that because I'm due in June with my baby boy. And so I'll be going on maternity leave again after that. Um, but yeah, honestly, you don't need me. Um, I'm going to set up a really good system. For me, I'm really a DIY. Like I learned how to build ads by taking like a $50 tutorial. This woman gave a really good tutorial and I literally went in the back end of ads manager, was just like pausing the video, following the directions. And you know, I'm just, <laughs> um, you can do it, you can do it. Okay. Giovanna says, that was truly a reality check for all the things I've been hiding from. Thank you so much for sharing that. It takes a lot of bravery and courage. And I just want to let you know that I love you and you're so on time. You're not late to anything, right? You're just, you know, um, this world is just riddled with the deceptions, even in the new age. And it's time. You're ready. You're a time capsule. You're a dragon that's ready to awaken. Paravel says, how to balance the inner masculine and feminine. I mean, this is a whole process I can make an entirely different video on. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there, there's literally going to be an entire course in the advanced level curriculum of um, ESA for specifically this because 
is so multidimensional, um, but you can just go in and try to talk to them. That's the easiest way to tune into, you know, your inner masculine and ask, like, hey, how are you doing? Tune into your inner feminine. Like, are you connected to your emotions? Are you connected to your creativity? Do you have a easy or a hard time creating structure? Do you follow through? Do you live with integrity? Like those are the masculine traits and previously they were the feminine traits, right? And then understanding that they are meant to come together. It's a learning process. So um, Emily says, can the 12 weeks be taken if you're not available on Saturdays? Absolutely. We actually had a lot of sisters from Australia some of them are crazy enough to wake up in the middle of the night to join anyway, even though they have full-time jobs. Like, I don't, I'm just so bewildered by their devotion to their growth that they're willing to do that. Um, but yeah, most of those women do watch the recordings. My recommendation is to go along. So like make, write yourself, make yourself an agreement. If Sunday or Monday or Wednesday morning, like whatever the day it is that you pick to actually follow through and go through the course, stick to that so you can actually go through the time and the um, timing and pace with the rest of the group because that's how you're going to be able to receive the most out of this active energy container right um the thing is that it's going to be just as good if you take the recordings but what you're not going to get is the active focus of the possibly thousands of women that are there with you so that shared collective intent is very powerful. So when you're just watching the recordings, you know, after the 12 weeks is done, you're still going to get all the codes. You're still going to get the activations, but there's a whole other octave of energy you're not going to be able to fully take advantage of. Eric says, I wish I was a woman so I can take this course. <laughs> so um, my husband, my twin, my beloved, his name is Shane. Um, you can find him on Instagram, Shane X Blondin. He's actually working on um, an academy he's launching in April that's more geared towards men. Like I was saying before, I wish I could teach men, but like just from knowing my husband, we're so different, right? A woman it has more water, and water is the most important thing when it comes to consciousness. So the fact that women has more water in their body just makes them process energy and create differently. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're a man and you're excited, go follow my husband on Instagram. Um, he's amazing. And he teaches me a lot about, yeah, he's, he's been just the most extraordinary guide and master teacher for me in my life. Okay. Welcome, welcome to all the people. If this is like a new experience, if you're new to my work, welcome to the mothership, to the womb temple, to the Earth Star Academy. These are the different spaces and temples that I've been building. Jean says, so this one is for only women. Yes, this one is for only women. It's called womb wealth creation. I'm teaching women how to create from the intelligence of their womb. And for a man, the center of your intelligence is actually in the heart. So this is why it's different. Your biology is different. Um, so Earth Collector says, is there any scholarships for this course? So normally for my weekend trainings and other grid work um, workshops, I basically let people pay like whatever they can. But for these containers, it's very important for the stability of the field to be held um, for the highest of every participant. And so I basically have charged at like the least amount that I feel where it's still fair because you're literally getting a three month long session for the price of two private sessions, right? You're literally getting 10 whole ceremonies and this course is gonna alter the trajectory of your life. So $555 is like kind of the, lowest end of the spectrum where other courses in the industry are 10 times more. So um, this is why, you know, it doesn't feel like it would be honoring myself or the collective container to have scholarships because it's about stability of the group field. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> okay. 
if a person has a twin flame, are we supposed to create together? So this is, a, <laughs> I will, I'm actually going to create a twin video. I have some um, carousels on my Instagram about the true twin light body architecture. But the short answer is yes. Um, but the long answer is maybe not immediately in the third dimension. Like my husband and I don't work for the same company. He has his own business, right? Um, some twins create a business together. Me and my, my um, beloved, we're creating like a, a timeline together. And so we're kind of working in different frequency fields, but ultimately we're, we're working on anchoring like the same multidimensional technology. So we have that understanding, but to the outside world, they're two separate businesses that are not related, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so um, Shane, Shane, let's see here. I'm going to see if I can drop his. Um, here is my husband's Instagram. It is at Shane X Blondin. I put it in the chat. You guys can go follow him if you want to. I mean, he's just a great divine masculine role model. Like my inner masculine has learned so much with from him. <laughs> um, so now it says, have you sat with indigenous elders about your visions for Earth? I've worked with a lot of different indigenous elders, and actually, um, my some of my closest friends work very closely with the Kogi elders, and it's pretty extraordinary that we are constantly channeling like the same messages, very similar messages, because I connect directly with the Earth. I've also met other indigenous elders that have tried to like sexually assault me. And so I think it really depends on the indigenous elders that you talk about. I've met all kinds, <laughs> but um, different ones I've had different experiences with. Michelle says, I hired a private business coach and was charged $1,500 for one, three one hour phone calls. So yeah, anyway, um, my coach, I think, charged $3,500 for one hour. And I just, I, I really appreciate it. It's like when you learn how to get value from things, because you're not just receiving from what they're saying, you're receiving on all signal transmission bands. You're learning from the way they behave and like, what do you eat? How do you live your life? How do you embody yourself? How do you deal with relationships? You're getting all that information, right? You're basically getting to sit in this energy field and and receive codes that aren't spoken, which are invaluable. So I will pay, you know, $3,500 just to sit in somebody's energy for an hour because I know how to receive value from situations. And it's taken me a long time to be able to do that financially. And before that, I would watch free videos on YouTube, right? Just learn from what I can and always receiving le lessons and teachings wherever I can. When you value things, you gain value, you gain in the bank of your body. Um, Victoria says, where can I find the meditations? So the three free healings you can find in the um, description below or wherever it is. <laughs> you'll see a link. You have to click more. You'll see the link to join the course and you'll see a link to get the free three free um, healings, which I truly just desire. Um, but I'm not you who feel that. I have no idea what this person's saying. But anyway, for those of you that are on Instagram, you can find the links in my link in bio. Okay, so um, Sheila says, what's the difference between the 555 and the 777? So the 555 is just for this upcoming 12-week course. You'll receive that and all the recordings to keep. And the 777 includes all the previous Healing the Wound containers and training. So that's two nine-week courses on multidimensional sexual healing, which is a steal, right? It's like you're getting another two medicine containers for $200. And I recommend it for new students because a lot of the concepts that we're going to talk about need a healed body womb relationship. And so we are going to heal in this container, but a lot of that healing happens in the first two containers. So if you are a new student, you don't have to go through those first. You can just receive these codes and then 
you know, throughout the course, I might say, it would be a good time to revisit this course and this class. And so, um, yeah, you'll just have those handy. If I say that, you can actually go and do those healings and activations throughout our time together. So Sheila says, as soon as you started talking about twin, ouch, I know the twin splitting traumas are intense. Shane and I went through such an immense dark night of the soul when we came together, when we were all just figuring things out because the level of twin splitting abuse has happened dimensionally on very intense levels. So yeah, Emerald Light says, explains the abuses on the different levels, gave me clarity on how we are disempowered. I'm so happy to hear that. That is invaluable. And truly, if you just remember that and pay attention to yourself, that's what I did, you will find your way out, okay? Um, so... Z. Stephanie says, hi, Z. Thank you for all that you share so generously. A question. Do you see your businesses as their own spirits? I do see them as souls, as their own spirits, as they that they chose me to be their mother, essentially. I gave birth to the Earth Star Academy, um, which came to me in a download in 2015. And then this project initiated me for seven years so that I could become the woman that's ready to birth it. And I actually gave birth to the Earth Star Academy and my daughter two months apart. So I say I gave birth to twins. And not only is our business a temple, not only is it a spirit that we're birthing into the world, it is also our greatest spiritual teacher because there's nothing that will trigger you and push you to your limits and help you expand your capacity than being a business owner. And, you know, not all of us are here to create a whole new business. So I am going to talk about how to become an entrepreneur as well, which is when you build the skills to become a valuable part of a business that already exists. So I have some incredible teammates. And as a conscious, you know, temple business owner, I try to really encourage my the, the, the people that work for me to express their gifts and to create ways for them to create income as well. And so it works both ways to when, you know, when you become a business owner, you have you learn how to be a good leader, essentially. And then recognizing that when you cultivate skills, you will also be able to join a high consciousness business. Sometimes people message me. They're like, hey, Z, will you hire me? And I'm like, well, what are your skills? And they're like, well, you know, and then it's like, well, what, what are you offering to the business? How are you adding your energy to the business? And I have hired people that are just very tapped in and, and very kind to train them. When I see mastery in someone, I can train them, right? But building skill is something that we still need to do. We can't just defer responsibility. So anyway, I see our business as its own spirit, as our children, as a temple, and as a house for God's mission, which is what a temple is. And I also see it as a spiritual teacher that initiates us into the highest capacity. If that makes sense. What currency are the courses there in American dollars? USD. Olivia says, I feel less guilty for enjoying life here on earth. I'm unlearning the I hated here mentality in the new age movement. Mind virus. I'm telling you right? Life is pleasure. I go outside and I just can't believe how beautiful it is. The other day, um, I, I had this experience where my son came into my body for what I felt like was the first time. And I could feel that he was looking out through my eyes at the world for the first time. And it was such a, an incredible blessing because I saw the, it was like, I saw the ocean for the first time. And I was like, oh my gosh and i saw the light coming through the trees and i just started weeping because like this soul he's like not programmed by anything he's just seeing this world and he's in the place where he's still a spirit that's like coming down to earth in his pure intention and when i felt that i was like wow that's how we're meant to exist we're meant like that god literally created this world so we can just be in awe be in joy and be so inspired by it. Um, so, Actunify says, should I charge those people that cling into my energy? 
Um, how and the majority so sneaky. This is about having boundaries, man. Like, I don't have people like that around me because I, you know, I, I used to have people that squat on my land and literally shave their, they come into my room, into the bathroom, shave their beard and leave their beard ha hair, hairs and dirty razor on my sink. That's the level of poor boundaries I used to have. Okay. And now I don't have that because I have built my self-worth. I have established healthy boundaries. I love myself. I appreciate the work that I do. I create safety around me and I don't have anyone like that around me. So anyway, <laughs> life is meant to be lived and gained wisdom from. My 30s is going to be absolutely killer and I'm so excited for all of you to be here with me. I can't wait to spend 12 weeks with you inside of a dragon miracle medicine container. I can't wait to just see the end of 2024 and all of you in a different financial and empowered place. Every single one of you, whether you're joining my container or not, that's what I want to see for you because 2024 is a dragon year, it's an emerald green dragon. And it's an eight year of abundance, infinite creativity, yang creation energy. You know, we start on the Chinese New Year on February 10th. And so this is the energy we're carrying into the world. We're going to start this year in the right way. And then you're going to take it all the way. And maybe we'll have a call um, at the next year, the New Year's Eve. And we'll see where we are because uh, I'm going to be in a different place in a year. And I want to take every single one of you with me. And I'm excited for that. So on that note. I love you all so much. Thank you for tuning in on this live stream with me. And I will see you soon. Bye.